Well, this afternoon, the National Association of Law Students is kicking against the new procedure for the admission into the professional law course of the Ghana School of Law for the 2022-2023 academic year. Now, per the guidelines issued by the Independent Examination uh, Committee, uh, students are actually expected to undertake to accept without question the decision of the General Legal Council in respect of uh, the published results. This, the aggrieved students uh, claim, uh, is arbitrary and signals some predetermination in the admission uh, in the admission process leading into the law school. So let's bring you uh, some of the demands which they are making and also the grounds on which they are making these claims uh, in terms of uh, asking the general legal council to deal with their concerns so this first of all point out that the national association of law students have taken notice and wishes to register the uh, general dissatisfaction with the uh, law students with aspects of the published arrangement and procedure for the admi admission uh, to the professional law course of Ghana school of law for the 2022-2023 academic year now beyond that as well the group says that the aspects of the General Legal Council's directives, which they have concerns with, has got to do with claims, first of all, that there is some sort of a predetermining admissions. And the students say that they are deeply saddened that irrespective of the actual performance of the entrance examination, the Ghana Legal Council, the General Legal Council, I should say, is determined to continue to release poor success rate, not because students actually underperform, but because the predetermined number of applicants to be admitted is 800 out of the 2,500 estimated applicants. These are claims that the students are making, which we cannot independently verify as of now. Uh, we we'll put that to them shortly. But beyond this as well, the group is indicating clearly that they have some concerns uh, when it comes to the refusal to decentralize the process. So they talk about decentralization and they point out that uh, there's also the problem where, of course, you have an increase in the number of applicants and the backlog, which continues to delay the decentralization of the course to capable law faculties and other educational institutions. Uh, and this, they believe, is part of the bigger problem, which is facing the issues of admission into the law school. Beyond that as well, the Controversial issue has got to do with point three, which is the issue of the undisclosed pass mark. The students say that they are di deeply disappointed about the failure or refusal of the independent examination committee to disclose or to be transparent about the entrance examination. This is where the problem is, because for them, following the Supreme Court decision in the landmark case of Professor Stephen Kwekwasari and the Attorney General, a 50% aggregated score has been the unheeding pass mark in the 2018, 2019, 2020, and also the 2021 pre-election um, and also uh, election as well as the post-election year examinations. Now, in light of the unfortunate and wrongful attempts to deny 499 students applications uh, or applicants at admission into the Ghana School of Law through a grading variation last year, we, the law school students, find this attempt to further obfuscate an already opaque process and settling, especially at a time when we need to be fully focused on our studies for the examination. That's the whole controversy and where, of course, the students appear to be unhappy with the General Legal Council and the Independent Examination Committee because they believe that it's time to be more transparent and it's time to also put out the conditions for passing and getting admitted into the law school. But why are they making these claims and why now? Joining me now via Zoom is Asari Hassan, president of the National Association of Law Students. Thank you for your time. You claim that there's some sort of a predetermined threshold that the General Legal Council is working with. On, on what basis do you, first of all, argue that there are some 800 students uh, who would be admitted into the law school this year? Um, I think we said that publication. Um, anyway, thank you for the opportunity. We had already indicated where we can find that, and it was read in Parliament, and that is what we are referring to. It's always been a case of premeditation, in that um, the material bias of the publication, as long as the exam is concerned, as per the advert we saw, actually confirms what we are saying. Why do I say this? Who goes to write an exam? And the path mark is not stated. That's the number one thing. 
Number two, even though the past mark is not stated, you are, you are supposed to accept it as it is without questioning. This is a human institution. So the possibility of a mistake is inevitable. Now I'm going to write an exam. You're asking me to accept the result without questioning. Now, you cannot even request for the, um, the marking scheme. You can't request for a review. You cannot request for a remarking. I however must state that in the Ganaku case, it was stated in there that the act the, the acts of the, the actions of the BLC was unconstitutional, which is to say that to force students to undertake by signing that I would accept my, uh, my result without questioning, it's unconstitutional. When you extend this conversation, we have the CJ sitting as part of the GLC and looking at this um, injustice being perpetrated against students. Now, how long do we have to go on with this? Because year in, year out, we come back to this same issue. Now, last year, if some of us did not wake up to talk against some of these illegalities, 499 students would have been denied. How long must we go on with this? And it's not that we don't have the ability to think through this. It is just deliberate, and it's something that is very frustrating. We need to stop it at some point. And we think there's a time. Uh, but, but for you to claim that, that well, there's some predetermined figure that the General Legal Council is working with, you agree it's not accurate? Because that's not official, is it? No, it, it needn't be official. Yeah, that but, is why but, but we you, don't, you don't have any document to prove that. that, that that's what I'm pointing you to. Well, that would not be right or accurate. Why are you stopping us from requesting for remarking or showing us a marking scheme? What is your motive for taking those actions? That's what we need to question. Because if you think it is a free and fair kind of exam, allow us to, call, to ask for a review. How do you tell me that to enter the law school, you are denying me from requesting for a review or requesting for you to um, show me the marking scheme? But when you enter the law school, students have the right to request for their scripts to be reviewed. I mean, in one vein, you are saying it's not right. In the other vein, you are saying it's OK. So why do we stand as a country? I don't think that is fair. And it's something that must stop. You're pointing to us now that you have a number of options available to you, including legal redress as well. Tell us about it. Well, legal redress because, as I, I, I reiterated, the Ganaku case actually um, declared this um, undertaking unconstitutional. We have the right to go back to court on that matter. That's one. Demonstration is also something that we love to do. So if it becomes necessary, would 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 use that. We are trying to engage to see how many people we can talk to or through to ensure that this problem is resolved once and for all. But year in, year out, we come back to this. We also think if the private member bill had been out by now, some of these things would not be happening. So we are also calling on the legislature RTI is also one, one thing that we are also stretching out. We are, we are also looking at to also come out to talk on this matter. Because if they are saying a right to information, and this information of even what the pass mark is, is not available to us, that is problematic. We are also calling on CSOs, anybody who thinks this is unreasonable, to speak against this. Because we will not stop until the right thing is done. You can't tell us, I'm going to write an exam. I don't have the right to a marking scheme. I cannot request for a remarking when it is a human institution and mistakes are inevitable. I mean, that is all right. We can't go on like this as a country. And we believe we can do it. So we should do it and do it as soon as possible. Well, for some independent watchers, the belief is that you may not be successful at the latest attempt you're making. Uh, in fact, we're just um, pointing out on the screens earlier the demonstration last year. It's, it's a part of a series of protests that have taken place over the years. And, and the movement appears not to be making any progress in terms of getting legal reforms. Why do you think there'll be a difference now? Um, to say that there would not be a legal reform is something that will be speculative. To the best of my knowledge, the private member bills we saw last year, if not early this year, coming from members of parliament trying to resolve the issue, it's a good step that I think we should follow through. We need to push. It doesn't matter. They can deny us 100 times. We'll come back 100 times. Because this is not right, and they are supposed to be the keepers or gatekeepers. Well, when we have issues, we go back to, to say, resolve it for us. So if these people are perpetrating this illegality against us, it is something that is very worrying. You wonder when I have a problem, whether or not I can go back to these same people. So it is something that we think we can, we can, we can resolve. It is, it is easy to resolve. 
And I feel we should just sit at the table, resolve it once and for all. That is what we propose. That if they think they don't have capacity to accommodate, they should let the faculties run it. And then they can sit as WIAC, just the way WIAC works, and then organize exams for us to come and write. Whoever passes, passes and becomes a lawyer. I mean, that is very easy. So yeah, I don't but, know but, why but, they are trying But you're, you're being oversimplistic on such a crucial matter. You do agree that even there are structural problems confronting legal education in Ghana, the, the issue about infrastructure. It's always come up. So these are some of the root matters confronting you, or challenging you the about, system, you agree? You it's, about, not as though, about, it's not as though we can open the floodgates now and everybody goes in. I'm not sure that's what you're expecting. There is nothing like a floodgate here. I think you've got to... Now, we have infrastructure problems because of two things. Number one, a group has decided to monopolize the whole thing. That's number one. Number two, they have decided to gaslight the whole system. The last time that we talked about this thing, they took bulldozers and whatever to the site, I mean the uh, law village, to show us as though something is going on and nothing was happening. And for us, we think that if they want to solve the problem and they open up to, let's say, the faculties, mm. the faculties come in to teach and then they become like the examination council. We are not saying open the floodgates because you have a pass mark. Any student who missed that bar, it's called, it's, it's, it's called to the bar. So for us, we are not saying open the flag. Mm. We are saying that it is possible to allow the faculties to also run this whole thing. You are running there, you're having problems with it. And then you become the examination body to ensure that people meet the criteria to become lawyers. It shouldn't be difficult. And to, to add to that, it is a provision in our law. There are documents to support it. It's in the constitution, it's in the... Another document that I don't remember right away, but it is there. The provision is there, so we should just we should just enforce this, and the problem is resolved. Uh, but then it cannot be done overnight. You agree? Of course, but at least it needs to begin from somewhere. Unfortunately, we are not even seeing that initiation. Nothing is happening. That's what the problem is. If we see them moving or starting something, then we can work with goodwill to say that this is the end point. A year, two. But this thing, I don't believe, would work because in 2018, this same issue came up and they said we are working towards it. This is the fourth year. So do they really want to do it is the question. How long do we have to wait on this thing? In any case, does it profit anybody to, to deny very smart students from going to school? Yeah, but, that, but, but that's your claim. You're claiming they are smart. In, in fact, um, the very last time we heard from the Chief Justice, for instance, on this matter, uh, during his vetting, he, he made it so clear that there is the issue of falling standards within the legal profession itself. You agree? Um, um, the question I have to ask is whose responsibility is it to ensure that the standards are up there? That's number one. Number two, referencing the 499 case, for example, you have 499 students who are going to be denied, yet they pass the exam. So when I say smart student, I'm referring to people like the 499. So by the ruling that they were going to use to actually deny students, Somebody could have had 78% be denied asset to legal education, but the one who had 50 could have gone through. And I believe that some of these things must stop. Last year, I read somewhere, if not this year, that others went through freely without writing an exam. You think it is okay to allow people to go through, through concessionary uh, means, and it's okay, but somebody writes an exam and pass, and the person should stay home. We need to resolve this problem. I don't, I don't think it's fair. We are asking for fairness. We are asking that there should be, there should be um, transparency. We are asking that we, we should make it available for students who actually pass this exam to go to school. They are going to pay their school fees anyway. So what is the problem? Why, why, is, why is the GLC making it so difficult for anybody to read law in the country as if it is anything? Yet you go to places like the, um, um, the um, Attorney General's office, they are lacking lawyers. You go to um, legal aid, they are lacking lawyers. You go to um, in Sawem, people are remanded for years. They need lawyers. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Who does it benefit? So I think this problem has to be resolved. And as soon as possible, it has to be done. Because we are not going to stop. If they won't stop, we won't stop. It doesn't look like we are going to stop anytime soon anyway. So we think that either they resolve it as soon as possible, or we can also use the, um, parliament can use the private member bill to actually resolve this once and for all. Otherwise, we are not going to stop. If we have to demonstrate every year to get this problem um, resolved, we'll go ahead with it. In the end, the argument faces you or stares you in the face. Um, the issue about 
the law profession being a noble profession. We've, we've heard that on countless occasions. And I'm sure perhaps it's part of the reason why the General Legal Council is not opening up. What's your take on that? I think they shoot themselves in their foot by even using those languages. It looks like they don't understand. Because a noble profession, and you sneak people into the school to go and read law. What kind of nobility is this? Number two, what is the criteria for determining that one is noble? Is it not about how we are able to express ourselves through the exams we take for you to call us to the bar? We have been meeting it. The question is, why aren't they opening up? So that, you see, my argument has been one, that if 90% of the students, in fact, 99, fail the exam, fail them, I don't have a problem with it. But when 99% also pass the exam, take them in. But you are saying that, no, you want to micromanage the numbers by reduce, reducing the numbers. Yeah, yeah but, but, the problem, but the problem and the challenge we have with your argument is that you're reducing, for instance, admission into the law school to simply an academic exercise. So, something that should be some distinguishing factor in terms of the admission process, I guess, and not just the exactly. issue about academics. The law comes in practice, you agree? To the best of my knowledge, no other criteria has come as long as going to the professional law course is concerned. It has to do with the figures, the marks that you, you get as a student. If you pass, you pass. If you fail, you fail. Nothing more. Yes, there may be other things like um, um, going through a police um, report or police search or something and those kind of things, but those are, those are more administrative. But other than that, it has always been the max. So if they call it a noble profession, Maybe they need to define what they understand or mean by noble. Because as long as we are concerned, it's about the max and we are meeting it. So they should open up. If they think they cannot open up or they don't have the space as the president said, we should look at using the faculties to get this problem solved. And then they can sit as um, an examination body to resolve, I mean, to, to, to oversee to the examinations. I think that's the best that we can we can suggest to them. Because to us, we are doing everything necessary. They are just using illegal means to just frustrate and worry. Students shouldn't be thinking at this time about marks and all those things at this point. We should be concentrating to actually make it to the law school. But we are worried about what is the pass mark. They don't say anything, and then they say you cannot review, you cannot request for a marking scheme. Who does this? It's on the head of. Nobody does this. It's very unreasonable. Yeah, but, and they but, know your, it. but your claim that um, admission into well, I don't know if you're being specific with the Ghana School of Law, has only been on grounds of academics, uh, can be challenged, you agree? Uh, because some other jurisdictions make use of the privilege system, right? Well, well, fortunately, I'm talking about Ghana. And I have not seen anything untoward or different from what I've spoken about. And I feel that it is time we sit down and resolve this problem once and for all. Let's talk about your... Happen. Yeah, let's talk about your next steps um, briefly. W what are we to see from you in the coming days? Um, and some uh, are uh, indicating now that we've seen it all, demonstration, protest. In fact, at some point, I guess two years ago, it turned very, very um, rowdy and uh, there was a clash even between the security uh, services and the law students. It never seems to go away. So what are we to see from your group in the coming days? Well, I was part of the 2019, and I remember what happened. I was, I was the lead for 2021, and I've been part of the petitioners. In I was part of the petitioners in 2019. So for us, we are law abiding. We won't break any rule, but anything that we can do to ensure that this thing is resolved, we will do it. So all at the moment, we are still in talks as to the next line of action because the first thing to do was to send us pressure. After which. We have another meeting um, on Wednesday. We are looking at all the options on the table. Anything, I mean, anything that we, we can do, we'll do. If it has to get to demonstration, if it has to be to, if it has to do with going to the court, if it has to do with um, um, doing anything, but we'll, we'll do it within the, the legal way. We won't do, won't do anything illegal. So you can be sure that the options are open and we would, would press on any of them. Uh, fortunately, you have a president who himself is a lawyer, perhaps his interest may be very keen in these matters. Um, you petitioned last year, I guess. Uh, what has come of that petition? Um, I think um, the petition was in two forms. One was to um, admit the 499, which um, he did, and it's something that we need to applaud him for. Um, 
The next thing is to open up legal education. So far, we've not had anything as long as that portion is concerned. But to the best of my knowledge, I know there was a private member bill that was um, um, being, in fact, it was drafted, and unfortunately, it's gathering dust at the at Parliament at the moment. So we would have to go and look at what is what is going on there, what has transpired so far, and see if we can get him to actually speak to them to facilitate it quickly. That is, if if it came from his side to actually push this. Because I heard the Attorney General said, saying that they were, they were looking at some documentation in that sense. I'm, I'm not sure where they've got into. But I, for what I know, I know Parliament has, draft, has draft, drafted something. Um, I'm not sure about what has happened with the, with the executive. So we'll still, we'll, still, we'll still knock on doors if need be. We'll still call on people if need be and see to um, 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 the conclusion of this matter. Hazan, I'm grateful for your time here on The Pulse and uh, we'll keep an eye on the developments and bring you some more uh, updates. Uh, but